Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Tips. I'm Tom Bear, and welcome to Mancino University. Today, we're gonna go over how to tighten your uneven bars quickly, efficiently, and most importantly, in the correct sequence to ensure your athletes always get a perfect 10. Now, come on guys, let's take a tour real quick of Mancino Manufacturing and see what's happening today. Okay guys, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do the first part of a two-part series on how to properly adjust your uneven bars. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the initial safety inspection of the bar and how to adjust the bar with one person. So option one for adjusting your uneven bars is a single person option, which means I'm the only person over here who adjusts these uneven bars. With that being said, step one is going to be visually inspecting the bars. This is very crucial. When I come to uneven bars, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna inspect every aspect of this bar to make sure that it is secure and properly set so that my athletes are guaranteed safety. The first thing I'm gonna do is when I come over the bar is I'm gonna look at quick links. When looking at quick links, we're looking to make sure that they are completely closed. By that, I'm saying no threads showing. If you see threads, please use an adjustable wrench and tighten immediately. After I'm done inspecting the quick links, the next step is I'm going to look at my spin lock and my snap lock. When it comes to inspecting our spin lock and our snap locks, we're looking for a few things. We're making sure, one, that the spin lock is not stripped, two, that the snap lock pulls out and applies pressure to the bar when needed, and three, that the spin and the snap lock are both tightened and seated into the uprights. So once I'm done inspecting my spin and my snap lock, I'm going to move on and inspect the cables. There are eight cables on this set of uneven bars, and what I'm looking for are any major fraying of the cable. So from there, if there's separation and the fraying is happening and coming apart from here, that needs to be noted with your equipment company, and they need to schedule a time to come in and replace my them. cables. I like to check the anchoring points whether it's a direct anchor to the floor or going into a space saver. I like to make sure that there is no separation from the concrete to the plate, whether it's on a space saver or on a direct cable down. That way, I know my bars are tightly secured to the ground. The last thing I like to visually inspect are our rails. I like to start by checking the tightness on the collars, making sure that the nuts are tight and that they're threaded all the way in. If using a quick release pin, make sure that the head is seated all the way into the collar. From there, I'll visually inspect the laminate on the rail, making sure that it's not coming delaminated. If it's coming delaminated, we recommend replacement, but it's not necessary. We also recommend keeping one e-rail in stock at all times to ensure that if you do have a rail malfunction, you can replace it a lot faster. So once you finish your visual inspection, the next step is to make sure all your cables are down. Just simply loosen the handle. You don't have to go a lot. Just loosen, it'll slide down. Once it's loose, the next step is to set the bar. I'm going to start with the height adjustment. I'm going to move to the low bar first. I'm going to loosen our spin lock. I'm going to pull our snap lock and lower down the bar to the line. From there, I will tighten the spin lock again and move on to the high bar. When I step up on the high bar, these quick release, these quick steps are a great way to, for me to reach this bar in a safe manner without having to jump and bang the bar around. I'm going to put one foot on the bar. Typically, if I'm on this side, it's going to be my right foot. That way, my left foot can wrap. I'm going to place my left hand on the rail. I'm going to stand up and wrap my left foot. It'll give me a little balance. From there, I can put my hand on the rail, loosen the spin lock, pull the sack lock, and lower down to the line. I will retighten. From there, I'll unhook, and I can step back on down. Once I finish that process, I'm going to adjust my spreader. I'm going to loosen the spin lock. I'm going to pull up and adjust. Right now I'm going to F for fig. I'm going to tighten. I will move to the back spreader and I will loosen this as well. I will slide it up and I will tighten this as well. So I'm done adjusting both sides of the bar, getting my height and my spreader adjustment set. I'm going to do the next step. And you may think it's tightening the bar, but for us it's not. The next step is to visually make sure your bar is square. By standing on parallel with the bar, I can make sure that I'm visualizing my uprights are square. If your upright is not square, there are two different options you can do. You can take and you can kind of pull and adjust that square, trying to get it squared up. 
or one of the most easy, most common and easier options are to technically pull up just a little bit, tighten it to keep the skirt out of your way if you have one, and then visually look at your turnbuckles. Turnbuckles create basic tightness on all four sides before you pull the tightener. From here, with ours, we like to keep about three finger distance between each peg. This allows us to have a square in tightness all the way around on all four. That way, when I come up here and I get ready to tighten, if I see I'm a little out of whack, I can just pull it and I can line it right up. Once my bars are square, I'm gonna take the next step in tightening the cables. Since I'm alone, I'm gonna do it in a method that's gonna allow me to get equal tightness on both sides, even though I'm alone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on one side, and the key is to always start on the high bar or the back side of the bar. I'm going to take this tensioner, I'm going to slightly pull it up. I'm gonna get it about halfway up. I don't wanna go too high. If I get all the way up here, I'm gonna pull the bar out of square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it up gently. I'm gonna get it till I feel about good medium tension. And then from there, I'm going to tighten. From that point, I'm going to step across. I'm going to get on this bar. I'm going to visually quickly inspect that, okay, I feel pretty square and still. I'm going to then take this tension, put a pull up as well, and you'll see I just gained full tightness of my back cables. From here, I'm going to quickly visually inspect my square again. Right now, I can see I'm technically leaning this way, just a hair. So what that tells me is I want to go opposite of that lean. I'm going to step across, I'm going to come over to this cable, and then I'm going to perform tightening from here. I'm going to pull up, I'm going to try to get as tight as I can, and lock it down. Then I'm going to finish off the bar by going on this side. Now that my bar is tight, I'm going to finish with one more visual inspection. By that, I'm going to walk around, I'm going to make sure everything looks good, square, and I'm just going to double check all of my hands. I'm going to make sure everything's tight and safe for my athletes. Making sure everything is tight is not a waste of time. It's very important and it also ensures safety. When doing this alone, there's something that I could have missed. So double checking and even triple checking is always approved. Now that my bars are tightened and I've doubled and triple checked all of my spin locks, snap locks, and T handles on the tighteners, I can officially say these bars are tight and acceptable for my athletes to work out on or compete. From here, we're gonna take a look at option two on how to adjust this bar with two people. Thanks for watching guys. Tune in next week for part two of how to adjust your uneven bars properly with two and four people.